Здравейте колеги от нашото виртуално VVC студио. Поводът за днешното видео е ето това нещо. Коронавирусът. Но ние няма да говорим за това дали го има или го няма, а за това, че ситуацията около него промени както нашето ежедневие, така повлиява и върху нашата работа. Сега ще направим един мост между България и Бразилия, за да видим какво се случва в другия край на света. И ще ви срещна с доктор Ренато Коста. Хело, Ренато! Hello from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Before we begin, would you tell us something about yourself? I'm Renato Costa. I'm a veterinarian for 27 years in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm working as a surgeon and uh, as a general practitioner since today. I had a clinic called Animalia for 26 years, but last year I sold it for the Brazilian branch of VCA called Pet Care. Now I'm working for Pet Care and the expansion of the group in Brazil. And I'm currently the uh, technical director of the Brazilian uh, Veterinary Hospital Association. My first question is, how has coronavirus situation affected the veterinary business in Brazil? Yes, you have go. Uh, definitely the coronavirus is affecting the, the, the Brazilian vet business. And to give you an idea to you, how is the coronavirus situation in our country? We had more than 1,000 deaths in the last seven days, and we are having an average of 200 deaths a day. So it's definitely affecting. And I'll give you the numbers of a research conducted by the Brazilian uh, Veterinary Hospital Association. Uh, with more than 200 affiliates of the association. And one third of the affiliated said that they had a decrease in their incomes between 20 to 40 percent. Another third of the affiliates said that they have an, a decrease of their incomes between 40 and 60 percent. And only 9 percent of the affiliates said that they were not, uh, they had no impact at all in their businesses. Just a few, around 5%, had an increase in their incomes in, during this period. And, but it is due to the, they are big hospitals and they had this increase because the small clinics around them are closed because of the coronavirus. So the clients of these very small clinics are coming to the big hospitals, increasing their incomes. And another bad thing we knew of, uh, from this research is that 30% uh, of the affiliates had to fire vets already and 49% of the affiliates had to fire non-vets employees already. What do you do to protect your staff and your clients? And uh, have you changed the working protocols? Okay, so we are doing everything to protect our staff and to protect our clients. Um, since the situation is changing every day, we have a virtual meeting with the leaders uh, every day, every single day, to reevaluate the situation and to implement new proto protocols eventually. So basically what we are trying to do is to keep the client away from the practice. So we are just allowing one client per uh, one tutor per patient inside the clinic. Uh, for animals under intensive care, we're asking people to not come to the practice. We're saying, sending them videos through WhatsApp about the situation of their, their pets. Or if they insist to come to the practice, only one person will be allowed and they can remain at the clinic only for 10 minutes for visiting. But we are now implementing even better, better things to avoid people to get in the hospital. One is the drive-through system. When the client comes, park his car in front of the clinic and will go there just to give the vaccine against rabies, for instance, or the heart problem preventative, so they won't get inside the clinic. And the other, the other one, it's, which is even better, it's now the zero contact that we call. So the client parks in front of the clinic, one of their, our employees go there uh, with our leash, collect the animal at the car, the client remains there, the, the pet is uh, brought inside the clinic for the evaluation and all the contact to know information about the pet will do with the client through cell phone or through WhatsApp. And uh, my last uh, question is, 
do you think that all this will lead to any changes in uh, veterinary business yes, in the future? Definitely, yes, uh, definitely, Jovko, definitely it will lead for some changes in the vet businesses. Uh, they will be more or less profound, in my opinion, depending on how long it will take. I mean, the quarantine, the period until we had a vaccine and, and life becomes normal again. So, uh, for instance, in, in Brazil, something that is already changing, we, we now, uh, telemedicine in veterinary, it was forbidden in Brazil since one week ago. But I work at the Federal Vet Council and our president asked me and another four colleagues to start creating a regulation to approve telemedicine in, in a week. So next week we'll have telemedicine approved in Brazil in veterinary. And it was forbidden for decades. So changes will, will appear like this one. But I think the, the secret for these changes will be the same that Charles Darwin uh, explained us in the past. is to adapt. It won't be the, the, the strongest, it won't be the smartest that will prevail. It will be the more adapted. So I'm pretty sure that we'll have to adapt and those who were capable of doing this quickly will definitely prevail. Thank you Renato for sharing this with us. Stay safe and I hope to see you when it's all over. Bye bye. Bye bye dear colleagues. It was a pleasure to talk to you virtually this time. Uh, please take care. I hope you and your family uh, continue well so we'll be able to see each other face to face in the near future. All the best from you all from Rio de Janeiro. Ето, колеги, видяхте каква е ситуацията в Бразилия. Знаете ли какво? Ако всичко това зависеше от мене, бих направил следното. И всичко да приключи. До скоро. Пазете се и до нови срещи.